Hey, I'm Andrew Jones. This is Artcast number 46, and today I'm painting Cogsworth from Beauty and the Beast. Hey everyone, welcome back. This is episode 46 of the Artcast, and today I am painting a picture of Cogsworth, the character from the Beauty and the Beast animated uh, Disney movie. This is sort of, I was sort of inspired to do this by the, the passing of David Ogden Stiers, Steers, Stiers, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, who was the voice of Cogsworth in the movie. And also was uh, in the TV series MASH and about a million other things. So here I'm actually sketching everything out in a watercolor pencil. I believe this is a terracotta color. And I'm going to be doing the bulk of this with watercolor pencils. Um, I've had this set for a while and I haven't really used it a whole lot. Um, I haven't really gotten the hang of using them all that much, but I've seen a couple people use them lately and wanted to give it another shot. One of the reasons that I don't do a whole lot with it is my my set of watercolor pencils is not very extensive. There may be only 24 in the pack that I have. so. It seems like I'm lacking uh, some color diversity there, so um, I haven't been using them a ton, but I wanted to use it here just to kind of get the feel for it, and I knew this would be kind of a quick sketch, and if it worked, it worked. If it didn't, it didn't. Yeah, there's an awful lot of white space at the top of this, and I did that on purpose just because of the pose and him looking up. I wanted it to be kind of, you know, this kind of uh, thoughtful looking upward with a lot of white space at the top. I don't know if I'm going to sell this, but if somebody buys it and they wanted to, to cut it down more like a, an 8x10, that'd be fine. So here I'm just going in with a watercolor brush um, with plenty of water on it just to go over these lines and kind of activate the watercolor pencil, kind of spread that color around. Here I'm going in with a, a yellow watercolor pencil and basically you just kind of put the pencil down and just go over it with water and it basically kind of turns it into watercolor. One of the problems that I have with it, uh, that I'm kind of struggling with, is see how that piece is going down. It looks like pencil when it goes down, and then sometimes when you apply the water, it doesn't, this is a good example right here, is it doesn't want to totally get rid of the obvious pencil marks. So underneath, it still kind of looks like you used a pencil there. Um, and even if you use a lot of water, you can't really get it to spread out. And I don't know if that's just the way it is or if it's because of maybe just Prismacolor pencils, watercolor pencils do that. Maybe other brands don't do that as much. Maybe I should pick up a couple other brands and see how they do. What's nice about the watercolor pencils is that it's a little quicker just to kind of sit down and, and rough something out and just choose from a few pencils and you don't you generally don't have to sit and mix paints or you know make a whole production out of it. You'll see my hand going up out of the frame there and, and what I'm doing is I have a, a scrap piece of watercolor people paper up above that and I'm just kind of um, using that paper to put down some pencils and kind of get it wet and see how it looks, test colors, and some places where I need a little bit more paint, so I'll just put the watercolor pencil down on a scrap piece of paper, get that wet and activate it, and it's basically like uh, using a watercolor paint palette. So the watercolor pencils are really good if you're 
on the road or traveling and you don't want to carry like a whole big watercolor kit but you still want to do some watercolors you just bring these pencils with you and you could even just use like a, a watercolor uh, pen that that holds the the water right in the handle of the the brush and you have kind of a self-contained little watercolor kit Right now I'm just kind of going back in and trying to get some shadows. Um, here's a little, um, what I thought would be kind of a, a, kind of a peachy color for his face and it just wasn't really showing up too much. So here later on I'll add some shadows and things to get that to take a little bit more shape. And in this video, I've actually cut off his feet, which I'm, are part of the painting, but you don't really get to see it. So I'm skipping, I think I skipped around all those parts. Just going back in, trying to darken some things up, give things a little bit more depth. I do like the look of this. I mean, it has this kind of nice hybrid between watercolor and pencil especially with the some texture on the watercolor paper this is actually hot press watercolor paper which i prefer over cold press uh, because it's a lot more smooth and i think it probably hot press probably works better with the watercolor pencils because with the cold press paper you've got a lot more texture and you're probably gonna it's probably going to be obvious even more that you've put down pencil lines I wasn't really sure what to do with the background here. I just kind of wanted to put like a little uh, bit of color behind him. Um, something that was like really warm. Um, don't really know if, if it really worked. I go back and darken it up a little bit. I don't know if it should have been darker or I don't know. I never know what to do with these backgrounds sometimes. going in with a little bit of a darker um, orangey color to try to put a little bit of depth into his face get some shadows going on there I'm just going in with some black colored pencil just to give a little bit more definition to some of those uh, more solid lines, his eyebrows, his eyes. And that's about it. This was kind of a quick one, but I hope you guys liked it. I'm pretty happy with it. If you like these videos and you want to see more, click on the subscribe button down below the video and click on that little bell icon to be notified every time I put up new videos. See you guys next time.